Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'm going to call the March 27th, 2024 uh, Select Board meeting to order at 5.30 p.m. I just want to confirm, um, Don, that you can hear us and we can hear you, please. Don's online. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Um, we will accept the agenda as printed, no changes and announcements. Let me do it or shall I? Um, there are no announcements. Fair enough. Um, any select board announcements or comments? Matt? I have two comments. The first is I was I was uh, driving down Union Street uh, about a week ago, and there was a family with a baby carriage, and they're down in the middle of the street because cars are parked on all the on all the sidewalks, and you know, and I sort of ignored it because you see it all the time, but then my wife showed me a thread online that was talking about Nantucket, and one of the things they were talking about is uh, you know someone was asking. How is it for families? How is it with our six month old baby? And the whole discussion was how dangerous it was and you can't walk around here anymore and you have to put your baby carriage in the street and et cetera, et cetera. So it didn't paint us in a good light. I know this is kind of one of my pet peeves to bring this up and, you know, and, and talk about how it's, it went from three parking one tire on three streets to parking cars over every single sidewalk on the island and it's only a matter of time before the ada you know or someone sues us under the ada act and forces us to do something but i just think but it's also hurting business now because there's people talking about how dangerous it is so i just think it's something for us to be thinking about and take leadership on i know we're trying to do it in some fashion but anyway the second is uh Matt Haffernreffer has been working uh, on a uh, on an article, short-term rental article for town meeting, uh, and is I would like to request this board uh, put it on the agenda for next week. I think right now town meeting only has one option, which is you know make it legal everywhere by all anyone who wants to do it unlimited, and I think that the voters have. You know, rejected that three times and I think there should be another option that's an actual compromise in some manner and I think Matt Haffer has got there uh, I can't uh, talk about it tonight because it wasn't noticed but I'd like to have the opportunity to talk about it and put it on you know have the option to put it on a special town meeting I also think that there may be another I've heard rumors there's another group that's doing uh, going to gather 200 signatures and do it anyway and so I think we, uh, yeah, going to call it, and I'd rather them call it by, you know, tomorrow or next week and give their intentions to us so that there's, it would be really hard for staff, but at least there would be a way for, to maybe do it, as opposed to just go to town meeting with an up and down on something that is, uh, is, you know, sort of on one extreme of the choices. So I hope that we agree to do that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Matt. Anybody else? Okay. We don't have any follow-up comments for prior select board meetings. Uh, we'll move on to public comment for items that are not on the agenda tonight. Is there anyone in the room who would like to speak in public comment? I have one hand up online. Uh, Rebecca Duane. Thank you, can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm uh, speaking to follow up on Nantucket Together's email to the select board on March 20th regarding the short-term rental registration program. Um, first of all, Nantucket Together is very much a supporter of this program. We appreciate the select board and the town's support of it. We believe this is vital to collecting the data and insights that both town management and voters have sought regarding short-term rentals and how to manage the future of short-term rentals. We really want to help them make it more successful. Right now, the program has rolled out is a pretty typical 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 
version of software. It is buggy and it also has language used in it that's still unnecessarily confusing to users. What we would propose to do and we ask your support for is we would like to work together with an appropriately authorized representative of the town to make it better. Um, and we'd like to do so as quickly as possible before hundreds of short-term rental owners go in and try to use the system and are frustrated with the things that are confusing or the things that just plain don't work, um, which aren't a lot, but a couple of them are pretty unfortunate. Um, and just basically as quickly as we can work with GovOS as well and make the system better so that before hundreds of people start trying to register their properties, that the whole process is as seamless as possible. What's happening right now, there obviously was oversight from Roberto Santa Maria when he was in the chair um, at the health department, together with some subject matter experts and GovOS to get the system up and running as quickly as possible, and that's great. Um, right now, we don't seem to have clarity on who from the town can answer policy questions that remain open. For instance, right now, the GovOS portal thinks that the deadline for registration is April 4th of 2024, when it's actually announced that it's November 1st of 2024. Um, but GovOS is not listening to user feedback that the date's wrong and we're getting spammed with emails reminding us to register. So things of that nature. I don't want to go into the details here. I don't want to bore you with that. But Nantucket Together would like to ask that a representative be authorized from the town in the place of the empty chair uh, at the uh, health department to work with us, work with GovOS, and really try to polish the system and get it into better shape as quickly as possible. It's really in everybody's best interest to make this as painless and seamless as possible so we can get the data, get the registrations, and really know what's going on with short-term rentals on Nantucket in a great, much greater level of detail than we've ever been able to see to date. Thank you for listening. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, we will respond to that um, as soon as we can. Uh, any other public comment? Okay, seeing none. Uh, there's no new business. Um, approval of minutes, warrants, and pending contracts. We have minutes and treasury warrants. Do I have a motion? I have one comment on the uh, minutes, uh, the first minutes, is there was a discussion of uh, oh, Hillary Rayport in uh, running over time, and then Don stopped her, and I think that that, if we're going to do that as a comment with everybody that is uh, over time going now into the future, then I'm fine with that. But if we're not, then I think the second two par par second two sentences should be struck. Um, Matt, that's been our policy, and Tom's been timing for me. It was certainly not any in any way directed at a specific person. If that's what you're getting at. Um, it, no, I, it, is, it is what we're going to maintain as a policy that it's three minutes. And I think maybe we need to give them notice at like two and a half minutes to wrap up. Yeah. So then, then that, then I am completely on board with that, Don, but it was just the first time I've ever seen it in a minutes. Maybe there's been one and I've missed it, but it was the first time I can recall seeing it. And if that's our policy going forward, I'm fine with that so that everyone's treated the same. Thank you. So Matt, if I can ask, your your concern is that it's in the minutes, very specified in the minutes for the first time rather than, than the policy itself, it, right? Yeah, it's just the first time I've seen it and we've had that three minute policy for you know a couple of years now and I've never seen it mentioned and then, you know, and then it's mentioned. And so if we've you know, so clearly we've something has changed from before till now. And as long as we treat everyone the same going forward, I'm fine with that. OK, so so the point being, if someone runs over, we make note of it in the minutes. Yeah, okay. or, or or if it's not if it isn't, then it will be perceived even if it wasn't on purpose, which I know Erica and it isn't, but it will be perceived differently. You know, if 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 we don't treat everyone the same, that's all. Okay. 
sorry, so do you want the last two lines stricken that say Chair Hogate noted that Ms. Rayport has exceeded the public comment three minute limit and Ms. Rayport continued speaking for a few moments or do you want to keep it in? Again, I'm fine as long we as it is treated that way every single time, you know, so. Okay, so with that comment, if you're not proposing a change to the minutes, do I have a motion to adopt? Motion to approve, Madam Chair. Uh, both one and two? Yes. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Um, by roll call, Matt Fee? Aye. Malcolm McNabb? Aye. <clears throat> Don Holgate? Aye. Tom Dixon? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Um, next up, Town Council <laughs> Study Committee update. Let's start with Joe. Joe, do you want me to project anything or are you just going to speak first? Um, you know, Erica, if you want to put the sort of the first memo up so that sure. anybody in the audience sent out on um, on Zoom could see it, sure. uh, that's really what I'm going to talk from. Uh, Joe, can you raise the microphone and yeah. get a little closer? Thank you. Just tip, just bend it up. There you go. Thank you. Good? And just, Nate, identify yourself for the record. Yeah. Joe Grouse, chair of the uh, Town Council Study Committee. Um, do I have three minutes? Is that what I have to do I have to talk fast? Um, well, thank you for the time to, to address the select board this afternoon. <clears throat> uh, just to kind of go over some of the stuff that I think you already know, the town council study committee was organized in response to a citizen's article from last year's town meeting, article 81 uh, by Curtis Barnes. Um, the select board formed the uh, committee and appointed nine voting members of the uh, committee back on October 4th. Um, it was nine voting members plus a uh, two representatives of the, of the non voting taxpayers group and a couple of alternates. Uh, we had our first meeting on November 30th and we've met seven times since then uh, on the second meeting I was elected the chair Jeff Carlson, the vice chair. Our strategy or, or focus thus far, at least in terms of getting ourselves organized in the first bunch of meetings, um, has really been to think about the project or the task in front of us as a third gathering information, research, education about the various forms of government out there in the Commonwealth, um, getting ourselves um, sort of familiar with that and then trying to decide the pros and cons um, of the various forms. The article, um, and again, I know you all debated this last week, the article uh, specifically talks about researching town council form of government and then having a, an outcome, which should be an article uh, at a future town meeting where the voters can decide where yay or nay, whether they want to go forward with that. Um, we've had a couple of conversations in, in our meetings about, well, is that the way we want to go? And I would say that there is differences of opinion on the committee at this stage of the game. Um, the next two components of the project looking forward, I, at least the way I look at it, and I think most of the folks on the committee do, is um, to utilize the services of the Collins Center, the contract that you looked at last week, to help the committee um, craft a town council charter or some other out output, depending on um, how we want to go with that, um, and really developing a public outreach strategy and program for the committee because um and i think some of you probably share this there's no way that this a change this dramatic from open town meeting to a any other form but certainly a town council form is going to go forward if we can't communicate to the voters and the taxpayers of nantucket why this is something that our committee uh, an ad hoc form committee feels is a good uh, a good direction to go in um just to share with you a little bit, you know, in some of the meetings we've had so far, we've had uh, a range of presentations from experts on town government. Uh, Libby and John Giorgio addressed us a couple of meetings ago. Um, we've certainly gathered information from the Mass Municipal Association. We've had a presentation from the town manager of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, which is a town council form and has been for about, I think, 15 years. Um, we had a presentation from the representatives of the Collins Center who uh, it was kind of a half educational session, half pitch on their capabilities as a consultant. Uh, we certainly uh, discussed the strengths and weaknesses of open town meeting, of representative town meeting and town council. Uh, I think based on some of the uh, discussion and debate that I saw in last week's select board meeting, we probably are going to allocate some more time to doing that going forward. Um, and then the most recent couple of meetings, uh, which I missed last week, unfortunately, but We've had a number of town executives um, 
finance director, uh, time meeting moderator. Uh, next week we have the, uh, Denise Cronow from Fincom, uh, Nancy Holmes, the town clerk, are going to talk to us about their views of, again, sort of how important open town meeting is for the town, its strengths, its weaknesses, what they think about the idea of changing or not. Um, I guess the last thing I would say is um, I, I hope that we can um, get approval of the contract for the Collins Center. Uh, I think having that resource would be helpful for the committee. There is certainly, if we're going to go forward with creating a new charter or uh, any form of uh, report back to you, it would be helpful to have their resource to uh, put that together. And in terms of a new charter, a town council charter, map the town's current charter, charter over to uh, a different structure or a different form. Um, and I also think they can be helpful on the whole public outreach side, which, um, as I said earlier, if we don't have a, a focused and strong, you know, communication plan, um, you know, this is probably not going to pass anyway, because as I heard many of you say last week, um, you know, I think the folks who go to town meeting right now like town meeting, and it's going to be tough to convince them or the other 90% of the voters on the island why they might want to think about a different form. With that, I'll finish, and if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, answer them or handle them. Matt? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, I think, I think the first question people are going to ask is how come we're not looking at, you know, a representative town meeting? Why, you know, why are we going right to a town council? So I think that's why I think that should be sort of, I know you guys have looked into it, but I think that has to be sort of weighed as well. Well, I mean, clearly the fact that the article was was worded the way it was, I, for one, came on board thinking that was kind of our focus and didn't feel like we had to, you know, um, deal with some of the other forms of government. We have looked at open town meeting, representative town meeting. We haven't spent any time on city mayor. I don't think that's really appropriate for Nantucket. Um, I would tell you, Matt, that I think that some of the characteristics of representative town meeting don't really get you away from what I believe are the uh, shortcomings and issues that open town meeting has. It's, it's still um, a fairly large group of folks that you can't count on who's going to show up when, you know, one or two or three meetings a year. Um, and, and I don't think really has the um, some of the operational and, a, and a sort of administrative efficiencies that town council, again, in my opinion, has. Right. Yeah, and and that and I and that'd be great, but you have to you have to be able to say that we've we've done a homework and here's what it is. Otherwise, that's what that's my point. Absolutely, yeah. and that's why really my focus is, in terms of our conversations in the committee and and some conversations I've had with Libby. If we don't come up with a public outreach plan that explains to people why we think this is a good idea and why you're getting some benefits for things that you're giving up, because clearly a lot of people like town open town meeting you know it's not going to work so yeah okay. uh, uh, your point about the co contract with the collins center um somebody needs to remind me because i know we talked about it um was it did we approve it contingent upon yes so it has been it, authorized okay. you approved yes, I, it but held the funding yep so so do we can we and should we take action tonight on that or do can we do you need a motion to release it uh, yeah, that, that's what my understanding was. It was sort of held up pending this meeting. My recollection generally was that you wanted to be sure the committee understood that the board is expecting a review of other forms of government. And once that acknowledgement was made, the contract would proceed. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll ask the board, does the board feel comfortable with that? No. no. Okay. Yes. Okay, thanks, yes. Don. Okay, me too. So I don't think we need to take action. I think it's we're, we're direct the finance department to go ahead. So we're good. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yep. And appreciate thank it, you everybody. for everybody's time, by the way. Always appreciate it. Yeah, I just, I, I didn't want to waste a good committee and, uh, you know, and miss one part of it and then, you know, be back yeah. at square one. We've done this yeah. a couple of times in my time. So, yeah. yeah. Madam Chair, yes. I would just say quickly that I think based off the what Libby just said in the discussion last week at select board that 
the town council study committee, which which I'm the SB rep ex officio on, needs to have a discussion about what select board talked about last week to make sure that that's what they want to do. Because um, that's what I was, I was the one who flagged that last week, and I'm not positive that will is there. I, I think that's a very, it's an excellent point, Tom. And my plan is, um, we, our next meeting is next Wednesday, the third. Um, I was going to, you know, resubmit the meeting plan and probably cut ourselves a 30 minute time at the end of the meeting so that we can have that conversation. So, okay. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Okay. And, and I assume you'll get back to us if that's a problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you again. Um, okay, next up is um, taxi owners request to schedule a public hearing and I'm not going to I'm just going to ask Stan to come up and give us a brief summary and I want to be clear to the public that this is not the public hearing we're not going to make any decision about these requests. It is just. We will authorize the scheduling of a public hearing, so if you want to give us a quick summary about what you what you're looking to change and why we should have a public hearing. Thank you. Uh, select board and Miss Moore. Uh, Stan, pa Stan Pavel, founder of Stan's Taxi. So um, our request uh, could be split in two parts. On one hand, um, we are hoping to get a price increase on average 16, 70% of the fixed taxi rates uh, to address uh, directly the inflation and the rising cost of living. The second part is um, we're hoping to uh, improve a bit um, things uh, from a customer perspective. Um, so a couple of things we are suggesting. Um, age restriction of the taxi cab vehicles. It's a common practice uh, all over the States and Europe, typically it's between seven and 15 years. Um, in Massachusetts, the ride share services are limited to 15 years. I think, you know, from customer perspective, uh, safety reasons and uh, environment reasons, it's better if they're restricted anywhere between 10 and 15 years. Uh, one thing. Uh, the other thing is probably everybody is aware of the Highline mass whenever the boat comes in. So we're hoping if we can, there are only three designated taxi spots. We are hoping if possible, there, there is two or three spots in front of us. So not too much details, just yeah. summary. So, there, so there we're talking about two, parking spots yeah, at the Highline. There are yep. two 30 minutes uh, parking spots in front of the designated taxi spots. If we can get those two, they're not going to solve the problem 100 percent but they definitely will help okay instead and of three there will be five and tightening up the dress code okay. safety reasons free flops absolutely unacceptable and um, sleeveless jerseys or sleeveless shirts totally inappropriate okay all right terrific um erica um so I just want to say that the public hearing would include the rate increase and the regulation changes, but in terms of the two spaces on Straight Wharf, that is actually scheduled for the next traffic safety work group to okay. review first before it comes back to you. Okay. So that probably won't be in time for the public hearing, okay. but I'll let you know. So I guess, Stan, my question to you would be, would you rather wait until that happens for the or proceed with the things that we can do now and then we'll have another yeah absolutely i mean for the for the parking spots yes okay yes. Yeah, so we'll move us. we'll move ahead with the regulation changes mm -hmm. and the and the rate change in the public hearing and Good. address the parking spots later thanks okay. for your time any comments or questions from the board a motion to schedule the public hearing so moved second okay so all those in favor matt i'm malcolm aye don aye tom aye and i vote aye thank you Okay, um, next up is a real estate matter. Tracy McDonald is here. The, uh, the first um, item she's gonna present is a request for a uh, proposed tour bus parking on Washington Street. Tracy, well, need to oh, there you go. Yeah, I got it, sorry. Um, hi, can everybody hear me now? Yes. Um, so I have been working with NERDA um, regarding the parking of the electric buses on Washington Street uh, or in between Washington and Candle. And in talking with them, um, they wanted to utilize uh, what's the southerly in red, the southerly portion um, 
two spaces for their buses and give up their uh, usual parking on Washington Street um, by, you know, in between Force 5 running down to where you see the bottom of the white line. So I worked with Mike Burns, the transportation planner, to develop this plan to sort of essentially swap out where um, Island Tours, I believe, was temporarily parking last season and instead make this uh, just bus parking, general bus parking, non-exclusive. And the remaining spaces that were Narda spaces would then become uh, one hour parking for, for regular vehicles. Okay. Any that, that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Tracy. Any questions from the board? Yeah, okay. I think, I think so, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. So just to be clear, we're actually going to add some. We'd be, yes, vehicles. we would be adding six vehicle um, parking spaces that are one hour. And, and then it would only be two bus parking spaces. I think originally it might have been, uh, maybe even six bus spots. I'm not sure. Okay. It was definitely more than what we're pro proposing. Right. And I think the extra parking is beneficial in that area. Do you need a vote? Yep. I'll we... move approval. Second. Okay. By roll call, Matt. Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Don. Aye. Tom. Aye. And I vote aye. Increase the Thank parking you. space. How unusual. Um, okay, Tracy, next up is the, um, the yard sale parcel. Do you want exactly. to present to us? Uh, sure. This is pretty quick. Um, this parcel C is part of, uh, one of four parcels that came up for yard sale and the other three parcels have already been conveyed in, uh, last June, I believe. And um, unfortunately, this one just didn't get included because we couldn't get a hold of the abutter, who's the benefit of the parcel. So it's a little bit lagged behind. And then uh, my predecessor was out. So now um, we're retackling it. <laughs> and it seemed to be all together. So we worked with um, the abutters uh, council and um, our town council, and they, um, they prepared everything and signed off on it. And so we ask that you uh, convey the parcel C to the Kindermans, I believe. Um, any questions or comments from the board? I am actually going to abstain from this. Okay. No, I, uh, when it is in those areas, I look to see how close it is to the, you know, to the beaches, et cetera. It's still pretty far away, but not in this case, but I think in future cases, if it's any closer, I think we should be using this opportunity to ask for a hold harmless agreement in the future. So, you know, whether the road goes away or, you know, other issues happen that the town gains an agreement from the homeowner now that they will, because they're getting this benefit, that they will not be, uh, you know, sort of coming after the town later if there's problems with coastal resiliency, et cetera. So it's just something to think about. I don't know the details. But it's some of the things we're talking about on Baxter Road and other areas that the kind of state rules on roads and things haven't caught up to the reality of coastal resiliency. But I think if we have opportunities to start putting that in place ourselves, we should try to do that. But I support this as it is. So I move approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Um, because Don is not voting, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that passes unanimously. Okay, town thank manager's you. report. Yes, thank you, Tracy. Um, town manager's report, request for adoption of updated agenda protocol for townwide use. Libby? Thank you. So um, several months ago, town staff, and I, I think some board committee and commission members had some first amendment training. And a number of issues came up during that training, one of which was agenda protocols. And that led to a discussion of agenda protocols of all of our boards, committees, and commissions, which aren't weren't consistent. So we had some discussion with town council about making them consistent so that 
the protocols are the same across the board for everybody and that is what was being proposed here so we would um, if, as long as the select board approves these we would distribute them to all of our boards committees and commissions and uh, in, instruct them to follow these consistent rules okay uh, any comments questions no comment i think it's great that we're being consistent and it, this goes along with sort of asking the boards to get to go uh, hybrid or in person and hybrid meetings i think it's good government and so i hope that uh, you know we'll, we'll do this and they have to follow it but i think that we're moving in the right direction thank you yeah and i would just say it mirrors the policy that our meetings operate under already so it's familiar to us here so um is there a motion to adopt so moved second okay um by roll call matt aye malcolm aye don aye tom aye and i vote aye that's unanimous okay libby do you have a report um i we... actually would like to defer this to next week i really had intended to get you something but there was too many other things that got in the way and um i wanted to just follow up on something that um mr fee requested recently which was an update on roadway and sidewalk projects and i have a list not very well organized on that which i will present to you next week and we are also working on and i think i mentioned this more than a couple of months ago a transportation projects update for all of the pending transportation projects so that i think is on your agenda for april 10th and this quicker roadway sidewalk spring work um, list is will be reviewed with you next week. Great, thanks, Libby. Um, okay, select board reports and comments. We have our last opportunity to offer comments on the warrant from this board, um, and then Libby, is there an action that we need to take tonight to adopt? Well, you probably should just, um, I mean, you, you don't you don't really need to do too much except adopt any outstanding comments that you want to have. Okay. Last week you talked about one too, is it article 80? And you, um, you had a kind of a, you all had some thoughts about it. So we've turned that into a comment and um, Erica will pull it up. Yep. So that would just need to be adopted. And if there's any other comments you want to make, now's the time. Okay. All right, we'll start with that one. Okay, so I'm just going to read it out loud. Um, this is Article 80 is, um, oh my gosh, I'm having a brain freeze. The content? <laughs> it's a home rule petition, I think, involving year-round housing yeah, restrictions. It's the year-round housing deed restriction. Sorry, that was just a moment. Um, okay, so uh, the comment is, we're getting there. And we did sort of draft this last week. So this is um, the select board supports the finance committee motion. Housing is a critical component of the board's strategic plan and enactment of this home rule petition would advance the board's housing goals and initiatives. How do we feel about that? Okay, do I have a motion to adopt that comment? Moved. A second. Second. Okay. By roll call, Matt. Aye. Malcolm. Aye. Don. Aye. Tom. Aye. And I vote aye. Okay. Uh, to the board, any other proposed comments on other warrant articles? Okay. Don, nothing. Okay. So hearing none, I, I guess the warrant is set. Do we have to? Okay. All right. Um, but while we're talking about it, um, so please, nobody try to contact Erica for the next couple of days because we are going to get the document in its final form, get it to the printer, and then the mailer. And that takes some time to just format and get it organized, and there's some other tasks that have to be done so as soon as that document is ready for release we'll post it online and we usually send it out to a pretty big distribution group so 
Okay, any committee reports? Yes, just one. Uh, two or three meetings ago, Chairman Holgate uh, asked if the Board of Health would look at uh, tight tanks at Baxter Road in case of an emergency. Our last meeting, Vince came in a nice presentation, updated the, the board, some of the members not that familiar with the issues, and the board unanimously agreed that we would support the tight tanks if needed in an emergency, given the situation of a particular dwelling. Okay. Um, does that satisfy? John? That's great. That's great news. Okay. Terrific. Thank you. Madam Chair, just quickly want to report from Affordable Housing Trust Fund on whatever day it was, Tuesday or yesterday, <laughs> that um, we were talking about town meeting and the articles to deal with affordable housing. And I thought it would be a good idea that if Christy came back before town meeting to give us a her kind of quarterly update that we've talked about on what AHT is up to. And I believe we're looking at early, the week right before town meeting for that. Yeah, already scheduled. Yep. Uh, okay, anybody else? Committee reports? Okay, seeing none, Move we are on. Turn. I have a motion? Second? Second. Okay, by roll call, Matt? Aye. Malcolm? Aye. Don? Aye. Tom? Aye. And I vote aye. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>